So we're in the final week of the OHL preseason, which means regular season games getting underway in a week. And while we have some time, why don't we preview a bit of the Eastern Conference? And I'm joined by Gene Pereira, my color commentator on Rogers TV. I guess we got to get uh, back into the swing of it, don't we? Yeah, that time of year again. Uh, you know, summer goes by fairly quick, but uh, the good thing, uh, it brings hockey season. And uh, uh, looking forward to this year for sure, Mike. And I understand your dog, Makita, has kept you busy all summer? Uh, she has. She has uh, her daily uh, outside goings on. But, uh, <laughs> you know, hopefully she's uh, she's ready for the year, although she she's not too happy when I leave her. But uh, maybe we'll have her up in the booth this year. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Now, this season, uh, there's been so much movement. Uh, even before the preseason got underway, the Brampton Steelheads making the trade for Carson Rakoff, and then even seeing the Barry Colts make some moves. Uh, are you a little surprised by how much movement we've had in the Eastern Conference? Yeah, normally it takes, uh, you know, especially big deals. Like, uh, you know, uh, when you see big trades, uh, obviously Carson Rakoff uh, going, to, going to Brampton and uh, you know, those type of deals usually happen during the year and uh, or at the trade deadline. But uh, a lot of action uh, before the year started and it seemed like a lot of it happened in the Eastern Conference as teams really beef up for a run there. It's made things really interesting, especially at the top half of that Eastern Conference. Yeah, because even before Brampton made that trade, a lot of people considering them a favorite in the East when you've got players like uh, Porter Martone, Angus McDonnell, and then you've got Ivan Kovic in Nets. This is a, a pretty deep team as they make their move from Mississauga to Brampton this year. Yeah, you know, and they and they, they dealt leaders, which gives them more picks. So they're obviously looking at another uh, big addition. Uh, uh, it's certainly uh, Brampton. It's it's an all in year for them. I, I don't think there's any doubt about that. I think you'll see the same with Oshawa. Uh, Brantford's going to have a good team. Barry, of course, with their moves, uh, you know, I'd expect them to do more as well. So I, I think it's going to be you know, quite competitive at that top of that Eastern Conference. And, uh, but, you know, the great thing, it's going to make for some great hockey. And uh, like I said, Brampton's in right at the start of the year, too. I think the second game uh, or third game of the season, uh, excuse me. But uh, so is right off the bat, uh, it's going to be nice to see that old rivalry kind of heat up again. And the Barry Colts, uh, there's a bit of a buzz in the air with the team after uh, seeing uh, the, the moves involving uh, Tristan Bertucci and then Brad Gardner. It just seems as though this team wanting to keep pace a little bit with their central division rivals. Yeah, I think, you know, when they looked at it, they look at it as a two year window uh, this year and next year. But, you know, uh, they decide that some big additions. Gardner, again, gives you another top six forward, really strong two way guy, really good on face offs, a right handed shot. And, uh, you know, a guy that's probably going to, you know, like I say, be a top six player. Bertucci on the back end. I mean, really, the, you know, the Colts look at it. They're adding two top five, uh, arguably top five defensemen in the league back this year with not only the acquisition of Bertucci, uh, but as well the, the return of Bo Akey, mm -hmm. uh, who's expected back early in the season. So, I mean, those are two big horses to have back there on the, on the back end. And, and then you add some, uh, you know, quality veteran forwards up front. Uh, you know, this Barry team is certainly, uh, you know, making notice that uh, they're, they're, they're looking to take a run this year. And with these teams in the East, we've, it's kind of like we've got the top four that are competing for the top and they all have some great goaltending and the Barry Colts included Sam Hillebrandt getting that invite to the Philadelphia Flyers camp, which is pretty exciting considering uh, you know, he was just playing junior C two years ago. Yeah. What a story Sam has been in. Uh, you know, again, the guy that when you talk to him, you can see, look, this is, he's worked hard for it. And, uh, you know, he's always kind of had to have that. You're, you're too small. You're too this. You're too that. And all he does is keep proving himself. And I think he showed in the playoffs. Uh, I think he showed during the regular season that he can carry a team. Uh, but in that playoff run, he showed that he can steal hockey games at big times. And and he had a, he's had a great camp with Philadelphia as well. I think earned a game third star or something honors in one of the games. And, you know, that's great for Sam. And, uh, you know, uh, his uh, experience now with the U.S. Uh, national junior team that he's getting and uh, well-deserving. And again, just one of those guys that really works hard, kind of quiet. Uh, but, uh, you know, there he is making the big stops when you need him. And uh, in the playoffs, the Colts played the Oshawa Generals, who ended up going on that run to the OHL final. It seems as though Oshawa might be poised for another deep run here with that lineup as long as they can stay healthy. Yeah, yeah, the, a lot of players uh, returning there, obviously, and uh, 
you know, Oshawa kind of looking to take care of finished business, lost in the finals. But, uh, you know, it kind of sets up a neat rivalry a bit with Barry, too, after that first round where I think Barry, up until the finals, they, you know, of all the Eastern Conference teams, I think Barry gave him the biggest run. And uh, uh, I think it's really propelled Barry into this season, obviously. But uh, I think for Oshawa, it's going to be a nice rivalry to watch between these two teams. But no doubt the Generals are ready to come back and, and have a big year. And, uh, you know, a lot of rumors about, you know, uh, Colby Barlow, who's going to acquire him? And, you know, you've heard you've heard Oshawa has certainly been maybe the favorite to land Barlow. Uh, but, you know, look, I think Barry, I think uh, a couple of other teams. I mean, like I said, uh, Brampton made that big trade, so they have draft picks. So, uh, you know, the way the East is loading up, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Colby Barlow, uh, you know, come over to one of these teams. And uh, another team that's going to challenge is uh, the Brantford Bulldogs. Uh, Ryerson Leanders uh, in net. Uh, what a statement picking him up from the steelheads, you know, Brantford already has that uh, great offense in front and now they got the, the goaltending to boot. So really that East division, uh, it, it's, it's going to be quite tight. Yeah. Great coaching in there. You know, they're never out of any game. Uh, you know, they just, uh, um, you know, they, they play a great style. They're competitive. And uh, you know, I, I like the fact they're kind of lying a little bit in the weeds here. I mean, you know, a lot of people know they're going to be good, but I don't think, you know, I think some people know they're going to be good, but not a lot of people. And I think they're going to serve notice early on. And, you know, like I said, you had a big goaltender and anytime uh, you had a goaltender of that quality, uh, you know, it, it makes you that much better. And, uh, you know, they're another team that, uh, and, you know, remember too, they, they added him leaders, but I think they're going to add more as well. Oh, no doubt. And uh, we, look at the top four teams. Okay. Clearly they're, they're the favorites, but then you've got the middle of the pack teams, which I think are going to play an interesting role. You've got the likes of Kingston, Ottawa, Sudbury. It's going to be fascinating to see how teams like that stack up. Are they going to be sellers or are they going to tweak with their, uh, with their depth? So really, how do you see it playing out with uh, the teams outside of the top four? Yeah, I see, you know, Ottawa, I think kind of served a notice with moving Gardner uh, that maybe they're looking more to the future, uh, you know, there, I think Sudbury, has lost a few, a few players. It'll be interesting. And, you know, a lot of times too, could depend how their season starts, uh, you know, quickly at like the first 20 games. Uh, how are you there? Are you, are you, are you a mid pack team or you're really kind of maybe, uh, but I still think at the end of the day in, in this league, uh, it's a cycle. And uh, I think you, you load up when you can and then you unload when you can. And uh, I think for these teams, the future is a better idea though. The Kingston Frontenac's, you know, they've made a couple of trades, maybe try to get in there as well. And uh, the Sudbury Wolves, again, coming off, uh, you know, great team last year. But uh, again, I think that, uh, you know, they're looking more to the future. And we talked a lot about Barlow, how he could end up with the team in the East. But then Quentin Musty, if he comes back, well, there's another trade ship for the Sudbury Wolves if they're looking for the future. Well, exactly. I mean, that's, you know, and, and these guys are worth a lot to a rebuilding team. Uh, you know, they usually get your really good young uh, young for, forward or defenseman, and uh, and then a, a whole basket full of uh, draft picks, which you know come uh, come to come to those times that when you got to compete, uh, you know you're you're going to be able to uh, trade off or you know even in the draft, like I said, you know the second, third round, fourth round, you can get some pretty good hockey players that uh, you know can really you know speed up that rebuild. So I think that's a big part of it. Uh, you know, if Musty returns, I mean, Sudbury, there's no doubt, uh, you know, it's going to be hard not to move him. And uh, you touched on how there's cycles in junior hockey. And last year, Peterborough and Niagara, the two teams that missed the playoffs. Do you see those two maybe challenging to get back into the playoff picture this season? I know the Ice Dogs, they continue to make all the trades. as uh, They made another three trades these last 24 hours. <laughs> Probably made a couple more here while we're talking. <laughs> um, uh, you know, uh, I think with Peterborough, when you look at the young talent that they, you know, again, there's a team that won a championship and, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, the management team over there has done a fantastic job. They added some really good young assets, got some draft picks and look, I mean, they, you know, if they hadn't moved those guys, they're still a pretty decent team. Uh, they're yeah. okay. Maybe not a, a, a top contender, but, you know, but you know that's what you do sometimes. You, you pull back a bit, and uh, you know what they've done is now they've amassed some really good young talent. And I think Peterborough's still at least another year away. But I wouldn't be surprised to see them flash as kind of being a handful 
for for some of these other teams this year. Uh, Niagara again, it, it's just really a, a top. You know, uh, obviously they added Brody in a, a trade, and uh, you know it's one of those tough things to get. You have to give, and uh, you know Brody is just. Uh, I think he's going to be a really good defenseman uh, here on Ford. He's a guy that can kind of lead them back there, plays with an edge. Uh, you know, Blair Scott, you know, came over here and he surprised me, you know, uh, just uh, his ability to kind of put up points and uh, that straight up skating style I love. But, uh, uh, you know, so it's it's kind of interesting. But I think Niagara, you know, you hope to see just some continuity. I mean, uh, you know, the this idea of moving players in and out, um, you know, it's just really tough for the room and getting that chemistry. And, uh, you know, look, uh, make no mistake, they got some good young talent there and, uh you know, a guy like Kevin, he coming back and, uh, you know, but uh, it's important for them to maybe try to get some, build some chemistry with the guys they do have. Well, either way, it's going to be a fun season. Once uh, puck drop and you and I were going to be doing that home opener for the Barry Colts when uh, the North Bay battalion are in town. And then we're back to the grind of being at the rink every week. Yeah. The grind and Micah got some news for you. Oh yeah. Some unfortunate news for the Barry Colts is that Bo Gelsma, uh, mm -hmm. is going to be out until at least early, maybe to late November. Uh, a shoulder injury there in camp with the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins. An unfortunate situation was uh, he got hit. Uh, talking to Marty Williams, who was actually in the stands of that game. So, um, you know, again, it's it's a tough break for Barry uh, right now. But, like, you know, talking to Marty, you know, he said the good thing is it comes at the start of the season now, and he's confident in the other guys he's got. And, that, you know, just the important thing, get Bo back healthy and he'll be a huge addition back in uh, in November at some point. And, uh, you know, as well, too, it, you know, it always provides opportunity for someone to step in, step into that top six role uh, that uh, is there with Bo, play with Gardner, maybe Hemming. Uh, you know, that's not a bad assignment, getting on the left wing with that. Uh, so, uh, you know. Uh, again, uh, you know, it's 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 a tough blow, no doubt, especially for Bo, who's trying to land a pro contract. But you know that when he, he gets healthy, he'll be raring to go. Well, he was the heart and soul of the team in that final stretch last season. And really, uh, it's going to be a quick difference uh, with the depth this Barry Colts team has. Yeah, yeah. And that's the that's the difference. You know, this year, I mean, you look at another year of Bowdoin and, uh, you know, uh, just listening to Utah, they're already raving about Cole. Uh, you know, no surprise, just his work ethic. And he's the type of guy, too, that, you know, other guys are watching. And it's going to rub off on his teammates. He, even though he's a young guy, that work ethic is just, you know, up and down that ice. He never stops. And, uh, you know, he's pretty level-headed, too. He doesn't get up too up, doesn't get too down, kind of determined. And, Mike, you know, as you and I both know, that after games last year, if Barry lost, Cole was never really happy. <laughs> He's just one of those guys that just doesn't take losing hockey games very, you know, uh, doesn't like it. And, uh, you know, again, he's just one of these great young leaders with this team. Uh, yeah, you know, and uh, a big year there expected. And, of course, Patterson, you know, these guys getting experience in NHL camps. Uh, you know, they learn a lot, you know, going to Vancouver, his first taste of it. And, you know, I, th I think, too, you know, Barry, they have a bunch of players away at NHL camps. You get in there and all of a sudden you're like, it's, you know, all of a sudden you taste a little bit of that, what it, what it's like up there. And it just that extra motivation and that when you return, you want to do everything you can to get back up there. And, you know, that's what the OHL, it's a great development league. And, uh, you know, these guys coming back, uh, yeah, they can help your team win, but it's just fun watching these guys able to kind of develop over the years, become the players that they are. And then next, you know, sitting back on a Saturday, you know, uh, a weeknight or whatever it be uh, just watching them uh, in an NHL game. Oh, it's going to be a ton of fun. And uh, Gene, thank you very much for doing this. And I guess I'll see you at the rink soon enough. Yeah, you'll see uh, Makita and I. There we go. <laughs>